Patra McKee, the number four seed. He's ranked fourth in the country, Braden Davis. The number six seed, Braden Davis, ranked ninth in the country. So a top 10 showdown nationally in this 125 pound Big Ten final. Jim, you're looking for a few things early on in this match. Well, I'll tell you what, just right that, there, you see that uh, position that uh, Braden Davis finds in it. He's a freshman, he likes to attack, he likes to drift right, but he mainly attacks from the knee up, right? You see a lot of like fireman's carry type action, a little bit of swing single above the knee, you know, and, and, and that's something that McKee has been very good at defending, and he likes to be in here, this front headlock short offense position. He's the guy that has all the experience, and Shane, you mentioned that, you know, he's done most of his damage in, in the consolation rounds. That's all after, after he's got beat up a little bit, He's come back with more determination in that round, but the championship round, this is new territory for him. Braden Davis out of Belleville, Michigan, Dundee High School, four-time individual state champion. Tim, he's a true freshman. Here he is on the big stage at the Big Ten. Well, Jim mentioned freshman. Hey, when McKee was a senior winning state championships, Davis was a seventh grader. I mean, that is just insane. Davis... 19 and 2 on the season. A couple of wins in sudden victory. You see the long range that Davis has, right? He's just basically he likes to go out there, sometimes get drops into his knees, but again, he likes to attack here. And he's normally wrestling guys that are just a little bit shorter than him, so he has a little bit time, harder time getting to his offense onto his feet, but he's an excellent finisher. No score as we near the midway point in this 125 pound championship final. McKee, four time national qualifier. He's the veteran, two time All American. His best finish at the Big Tens was back in 2022 when he was third. He was sixth a year ago, and then two and two at the national tournaments. Had that great run in 2021 on the backside, won so many matches to place third. He was fifth in 2022, the two-time All-American. Yeah, I loved his interview yesterday with Hannah when she talked about the first time in the finals, and he says, it wasn't my time before. It's my time now. 125 pounds, crazy weight class. That trend continued here in College Park. Underhook there for McKee. This is where he likes to be, Jim. Yep, he's got a good underhook in both positions here. I think Davis does a good job, though, too, holding on to those triceps there, giving himself another chance for a stalemate there. They'll break free. I'm looking also for McKee to go ahead and look to attack that right leg. He's got a nice shot right there. We've seen him here in some big matches. Get to that right leg of uh, Braden Davis. You know, Jim, you mentioned in the championship round, this is McKee's first time getting to wear the gold um, uniforms. Uh, and right. that's every gopher's dream. And he's in the gold singlets that are reserved for the finals. You got to earn the right to put on those gold gopher singlets. 30 seconds here in a scoreless first period. No real legit attacks by either wrestler up to this point. Takedown would be so huge because both of these guys are really tough. They want to be on the mat and on top. Yeah, that's, I think, you know, one of the best things that, that you make that transition from high school to college. If you can be tough in the top position, which Davis has been in critical moments in his, uh, his career so far, in his freshman year, the big wins he's had, he's been able to stay in the top position. Scoreless after three minutes. Yeah, McKee did a really Red good job of keeping good position. Red takes down. McKee with the choice. And the gopher will go on bottom. Interesting choice there. Sometimes, you know, if you feel like you, you, you want to be on top here, you want to put a little more physicality onto the freshman there, you defer and let him make that choice. But he went right forward. He wants to be down. In this Big Ten Conference, nine guys ranked at this weight class, six of the top nine, and nine automatic bids to the national tournaments in a couple of weeks in Kansas City. What have you liked, Jim, about Braden Davis at the top position as a true freshman? Well, just his range, you know, and if you're going to be su successful in the top position, you got to go ahead and have that, that, that reach. You'll have to knock a guy down a little bit right there. You see, he's, but the Minnesota wrestlers are so, both these programs, very skilled at being able to give their guys a fighting chance to get out. Now you see McKee getting back up. And look at the follow there that you have from Davis. Chance for a mat return. But again, this is McKee. 
Good return there. Great return. Got the gopher up in the air. Continues to build his riding time. It's over 45 seconds. Great start to the second period for the true freshman, yep. Brayden Davis. And one thing I like about being in down this one knee up, one knee down position. Oh, he collects. He's getting swiped. Brayden Davis puts McKee in near fall criteria. Three near fall. Three, three, three near, near fall for Brayden Davis. Great man awareness. You see, he keeps the toes inside that cylinder as he continues to build the riding time. What a sequence. Didn't see that one coming. Really didn't. How impressive for a true freshman in that position to go ahead and not just ride, and I like his old school ride, the tight waist, getting the wrist, but to get that tilt, oh my goodness. Well, Heard you say it a couple of times, Jim, over the course of our broadcasts, ride a rider. Yeah, and I think that's what, what Davis did there, but he anticipated that back pressure he got from him and then just had the hand tied up here, just went for the tilt. Now a little bit better stand up there effort. Good job of getting his hips out, making the switch in. Neutral. Now expect McKee with 37 seconds left. He's fully aware that he needs to get on his horse and get on the on the offensive attack. Look for an attack to that, to his left. Braden Davis is right. Down to 25 ticks in the second period. Davis with a three point turn after a scoreless first period. Heavy on the head, McKee late in the second period. Yeah, good job, you know, that, that little half shot right there. Actually got snapped down by McKee, but getting back to a neutral position. But look at Braden Davis in this replay here on the back points here. Anticipate the, the back pressure he gets from McKee. See the little back pressure right there? Oh, okay, you're gonna try to go back? Well, I'll take you all the way back to your back. Go ahead and get set. Now Davis will go on bottom. Davis in the quarters in sudden victory, 8-7 over Eric Barnett, the three seed, and then in the semis over Michael D'Augustino, the All-American for Michigan, 5-2 in the second sudden victory. Both these guys battle-tested McKee in this semis, beat Dean Peterson, and there's an escape. Great work on bottom. He's doing everything right. Yeah, nice little elevator right there. So hit that. Excellent technique. And now he's going to get on his horse, all right? It's been a while since Penn State had a 125-pounder that was even close to the final since Nico Megalutis. And here he is, a true freshman, answering the call for the Nittany Lions. And he's got the riding time over a minute. Yeah, notice how he's clinging on those elbows right there. Feet out wide. Guy that's used to winning a lot of matches in high school. Heading into this season, Penn State did not have that clear to find 125 pound starter. Davis gets the opportunity, was not ranked, and just continued to elevate himself throughout the season. And here he is on the cusp of a Big Ten title. Well, when Cale Sanderson made him available for an interview <laughs> before me, you knew he, you knew he had potential. In on the legs is Davis, time ticking away on McKee. Yeah, that's a great situation here for Davis. He's just, you know, holding on to that leg. Again, below the knee right now. That's where you want to be here with McKee. McKee looks up, gives the referee, Jamie George, a brown, and able to go ahead and get that stalemate call. Yeah, and you're right about this is McKee's time right now. Now that he's got to get something going right now, get this set up, and pull the trigger. He had heroics. In the semi against Dean Peters in the ninth seed, he scored late, sent it a sudden victory, and then won it six to three. Can he do it again? Time is running out. He's down to a half a minute. Well, he's been in that over and under position with it, you know, snap down and try to whip him over, take it all the way to his back. But he's got to go for the takedown right now. Scramble here for McKee. Davis didn't go all the way with it. Neutral. Neutral. He was falling right into his lap right there. Big moves here. Ten seconds left. The riding time is locked up for Davis. He's going to win it. He's going to hang out of that single leg switch off and put a cherry on top as he plants McKee to the Resolite. Braden Davis of Penn State, the true freshman, your Big Ten champion. Final 
Rigason okay. winning that contest four to one. They met in the duel mid-January, eight to five. Rigason came from behind in that match, also had a riding time. Rigason had his red shirt removed in January, and TJ, he has been spectacular for Sean Borman. He has, and he started his career a couple of years ago with a big pin against Rutgers, and here he is in the finals for the first time, opportunity to win it over a Rutgers Scarlet Knight. And this is a difficult guy to prepare for, Dylan Schauber. He, he just has a beautiful little left-handed uh, high crotch shot right there. He likes to attack that left leg. And actually, it's even back in Ragason's stance a little bit. But you know what? He just gets to it. I, there's a nice, beautiful duck under here to the other side. Now he comes in, has a little tilt situation possibility. No points there, but isn't he slick? Look at this from Dylan Schauber. Gets the three takedown. Has the left leg in. Working on a tilt against Ragason, the Wolverine now to his feet. Schauber looking for a mat return. Yeah, nice job by Ragason coming back here off of that. You know, kind of bounced off the mat, and that was enough to give enough momentum here to work back into it. But what a gorgeous duck under. Jim, you've been in these situations as an athlete and as a coach. The first 30, 45 seconds, what is the most critical thing to establish? Start breathing. <laughs> I really mean that, okay? You got to get yourself under control. There's nerves out there. Just to run out from the outside to the middle of the mat here. You know, you see your coaches again. They're, they're out there waiting for you. You got to get yourself back in a mental state of mind here to execute technique. Schauber, he's an elite wrestler. He was uh, on the U23 world team for Puerto Rico in Albania earlier uh, in 2023. Dylan Ragason from Elk Grove Village, Illinois, a two-time state champion at Montini Catholic. Three-time national qualifier reached the blood round a couple years back in 2022. You hear the roar of the crowd in the background. Two other matches taking place. Aaron Nagawa, Penn State, getting a pin for the Stewart Nittany the Lions. Oh, on one no of the control. side mats. And here's Schauber once again looking for a second takedown. And able to get to no that control. back leg as, as Ragason was able to try to, he's trying to shrug him to the side with a little elbow tie shrug right there. And it was enough to allow uh, Schauber to get back in on that leg on the back side there. Good action here. Boy, these guys go at it. Exciting first period here in this 133 pound final. And now Ragason has an advantage on the edge there as that bounds, right action. foot goes off the mat. As you can see, the referee's right there to call it. This go. is Nick Grasso and Kurt Frost, our two officials in this match. Shaw had a really good season. Out of Lorraine, Ohio, Elyria High School, three time place winner before heading to Piscataway. Inside 30 seconds. You leave that leg behind right there, and, and Schauber's going to get to it. He's pretty effective at basically fitting and finishing this position. He's getting a little stretched out. Stop. Got to cut the sense. He's, we'll take points if they're coming here, but he's not really hunting anything down here at the end of the period with the lead. I believe Schauber has now led in all three matchups against Ragason but does not have a W to show for it yet. It in the Short time in this first. 3-1 for the Scarlet Knights, and Schauber get that critical first takedown. Red, you choice. know, you, you go scout a guy, Top you know he's going to attack third. one direction here, but he ducks Three under going. that side. Look at those shoelaces going Red flat, first. basically windshield Face wipering me. around Green's to, to the outside, and, and easy takedown. Almost getting into a tilt Good situation start. for near fall points there. Bottom man set. Really caught Shaw, Cover, uh, little Gregson quad. leaning in that situation. And now with 21 seconds of riding time here with Schauber after the takedown here, I expect him to go ahead and try to stay in top position if he can. He's got a really decent uh, mat return, but, but he gives it up. Gives up the quick escape. Those quick escapes so big. This match is very, very reminiscent of the dual meet they had. And you can, in that situation, the, the pace of Ragason picked up you know he got over the fact that you know he, he felt those shots he felt those attempts and was measuring them pretty well at the end of the match do it in the Schauber center began his career at 125 he was injured last year a good one-two punch with dean peterson and dylan schauber for rutgers at 125 and 133 one point match 115 remaining second period wrestle through that Stop, stalemate. You know, 11 left in the uh, second period here. You've got to make sure that your attempts, when you have the lead, 
are just as firm and as solid if it's a 0 0. You, you know, your penetration step coming all the way through, lowering your level. Right there, you see a little more shallow shots there by Shaver. Action. And, you know, he's dropping down and kind of waving at the leg right now as totally, totally committing to the shot. Yeah, but I think next time if they get to the edge again and that same thing happens, that'll be a stall warning on uh, Shaver. Well, it potentially, but, but he is dropping his level and he's the one that's getting to the legs. Right there, another shot, but it's a little short. Regison was looking for that go behind, now gets back you to get, those double unders. Yep, gets yep. a little closer each time, and like Jim says, he's really measuring. Big yeah. throw there Whoa. from Shaver, he puts Regison on his back. Big time toss. He might get a fall here. The tosser tossing the tosser. Yeah, it was a perfect time to go for it. You dealt, thought the, you know, Ragason was really tense and tight. He locked himself around that upper body, and then he saw the outside of the, the circle there, and he basically tried to push him off the mat. Great time for a lateral drop. It couldn't have been a better time. And just like that, 10 to 2, it comes in the final 30 seconds. Shaver, great defense of those underhooks from Ragason, turning into his own offense. Bottom man set, cover. Jim, having um, Sebastian Rivera in the room and the partners like that, this comes some reps with a competition like that, Improve. don't you believe? Well, I think that it, you've got Peterson, you've got guys like Rivera, but you've got confidence. You know, everybody in there, oh, get a little bit high. There. And now Ragason in the final 10 seconds will get a reversal to make it 10 to four as we go to the third. Yeah, you know, he did everything good in that situation. Let's take a look at this Down. big move. See how Ragason really got caught just kind of driving him off here. That was double over. Series double over both triceps right there. Excellent Wait job. You can see left toe Get inside set. the cylinder. Red, you got one caution. Roll Get through. Set. Get set. You got one you know, caution. Shaver's got the ability to ride with the legs. Stay I don't set. expect he's gonna that give you he's going to be too committed knowing that uh, he's got to look for something big right now. Still you, Green. Right there. Still you. Gives the escape. Green, you're in control. No, not quite yet. Green, you're in control. Got to protect his ankles. Still you, Green. One red, neutral. There's the escape. 11-4 match. Here we go again, guys. Yep. And how how committed is is, is Shaver going to be to this over and under Still position the right there? He he's looking to get out of town. All right. Action. <laughs> he already hit his home run. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Um, taking the bus. Yeah. Ragason said, you showed me yours. I want to show you mine. Yeah. Good wide base, fighting off that short offense situation. You want to fight as much as you can right in here. You want to stay square. And you don't want to push in too much here to Ragason because you don't want to get whipped in that situation. If he could get back up to his feet without pushing into Ragason, right there, just like that. Looking for a whip over, counter attack there oh, for wow. Shaver. Times it perfectly, and tack on three Two. more for the Scarlet Knights. Three. And all he had to do is get to his feet right there, get the right angle, and run it down. Shaver did such a good job of getting so low there, driving through the hips for that takedown. Just over a Same minute remaining. Starts. Shaver Slow looking to join Slow Anthony Ashnall and Nick set. Soriano. Cover. as Rutgers Big Ten champions. Clearly a locked hands call right there. I don't know how that was missed. Center. Yeah, that was just, <laughs> yeah. You can see Ragason looking up as Schauber locked the hands and just had one leg up and one you know, knee down Bottom and toe. And Cover. That one was missed. Right there. <laughs> He's getting, he's Improve. locking those hands up really quick. Improve. Riding oh. time goes Fine. over a minute with that mat return. Yeah. Improve. One green neutral. And here comes Ragason. Yeah, expect more action here. Lower level shot here. I'll throw by. Three yeah, green. give up the takedown in this situation. Green, you're in control. Still you. Improve. You just got to let him go, Dylan. One red. Center. 23.
So take down and, and, and uh, uh, four back points for Agassiz. He's got to look for something big here. Going with the cement. Oh, sir, but yeah, there settled by back right there, Schauber. Ragason went for it. Final 10 seconds. Schauber would love to end this with a stick. The four near fall points. And riding time. Ends up with a tech ball, correct? 23 to 8. A tech fall for Dylan Schauber. And he is your Big Ten champion, the two seed here in Maryland. Sergio Lemley for the second time this season, five to four, and Jesse Mendez knocks off the reigning Big Ten champion here at 141. Real Woods, six go, to three, Bartlett and okay, Mendez for the yeah. title at 141. Both these guys so exciting in different ways, as uh, Jim pointed out. That's why uh, uh, the, the potential for this matchup uh, didn't disappoint in the dual meet and. Uh, I'm looking forward to today's rematch. Yeah, I, I look at this match and I see that left-hand collar that Bartlett likes to hit. And he's got that left leg back and he really hammers with the left-hand collar right there. If he can get that most of the match, he he sets that up and he is, is actually his shot looks a little bit like that left-hand collar. And that's what you see him get a lot of clean Off looks at guys, a lot of clean finishes because he it. mixes that up a little bit between his left-hand collar and his shot. For Mendez, you know, he's just tough in every position. Better. He'll look to grind you down a little bit, but when he really needs points, he's got that freight train double, puts his head right in somebody's chest, and he'll go. You know, these two come, came to 141 from different directions, and it's the right way. Jesse Mendez down at 133 last year, up to 141, and a couple of years ago, Bo Bartlett at 149, down to 141 when it was made available by Nick Lee graduating, but this is the right weight for both of them. Mendez is bigger, stronger, better this year at this weight class. Yeah, it's unbelievable he made 133 last year. Take a look at that body and that frame. If Bo Bartlett wins this match, it will clinch the Big Ten title for Penn State. Penn State and Michigan, the only two teams mathematically alive at the moment. The team scores running across the bottom. You see that left-handed collar tie, always kind of a Go to here for uh, Bartlett. Now you see Mendez working inside there for the first time. Bo Bartlett, as you mentioned, TJ, in his second year at 141. He was third here at the Big Tens last March, third at the National Tournament. Mendez, sixth last March in Ann Arbor, and sixth as an All American in Tulsa. Fell to Aaron Nagao of Penn State in that fifth place match. Here's oh, Mendez. Wow. Very with well timed. Very good attack, but you see the defense and wow. that athleticism from Bartlett. He just, you know, looked like he was going all the way over to his rear end on that and just popped right back up. That's the acrobat in, in Bo Bartlett that he, you know, just so difficult to get off of his feet because most guys go down on that double leg shot because he timed it underneath that collar tie. Short time down to 20 seconds here in this first period. An inside collar tie by Bartlett, keeping Mendez away from digging that Let's right under hook that he would like to get as a control tie. Final 10 seconds. Late shot there from Mendez driving through. Countered with the whizzer from Bartlett on the edge. And it's a scoreless first period. Both these two phenomenal preps, Bartlett from Tempe, Arizona. Went to Wyoming small, Seminary where he small. captured four national prep championships. Mendez from Crown Point, Indiana, a four-time Indiana okay. State champion. And the Buckeye will go on bottom to begin this second period. Quickly to his feet. 
He's fighting hands right there, getting his feet moving. Good mat return there by Bartlett. He understands the concept there. Scoop the legs up, get the hands split here. Now the return there from the Nittany Lion. Yeah, but now Mendez is thinking a little bit more about getting a new Same start. Way, guys. What I liked about the end of that first period there, Mendez was sending a message there inside five seconds. I'm still going. I'm still here all day. Is that, uh, Jim, from a boxing standpoint, the body blows, the body blows. How, how does that uh, uh, do the same thing in wrestling? Is that uh, something that uh, Mendez wins on with that uh, kind of shot? Well, he just tells you that, that, you know, that he's willing to go ahead and go full bore on his offense all the way through this match. Bartlett doing a great job in this top position. That is so tough to do. His, his right Good bicep job. right there, staying tough. 35 seconds of riding time. That's good effort there by Mendes, but he did have to work at it. And you know, when you're riding a guy like, like Bartlett was, you know, and he hasn't got many shots Russell off of this situation. He got a little bit of riding time on him. The guys, Russell out of it, guys. You know, weathered himself a little bit here, trying to get out. It's so important to get out under 30, under 30 get seconds or a minute in this situation. Well, I, I think the next shot the, by Mendez, it, there could be a stalling warning on uh, Bartlett. The, the possibility there, but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I agree with you. It's Bartlett's oh, turn to, to go right now. You warm out a little bit. What's your go-to shot? What are you going to try to hit with? And the reaction I see here from Mendez, he's looking to tie that, that collar tie up again right now. See, so he's going to the wrist. Goes and that underhook now on the right side. Just now like he's got him. double unders. Yep. Heavy on the head with some hard snaps, Mendez. And the little battles inside the battle there, right there. Fingers, get out of Mendez them. Mendez comes over the top of that collar tie. You get him thinking so, so much about that collar tie that, that now the legs become pretty simple, but the, the legs become vulnerable. And his first uh, second period escape leads it one nothing late in the second period. Bartlett will go on bottom most likely to begin third period. Green your choice. Green down. So looking back to that dual meet, it didn't That's seem like thing. Mendez was all that that uh, interested in, in, in riding in the top position, wanted to get it done on the feet. Now a little bit more effort. They're trying to keep him down, making Bartlett try to work a little bit harder than he's used to. There's a roll from Bartlett's. No job! And the Nittany Stop! Lion ties this matchup at one apiece. Well, that's the, the acrobat in him, that forward roll right there. Went right into a little elevator where he kicked him off him Better. a little bit. Break. Said it before, you want to see some crazy Good stuff, up. go to Bo Bartlett's Instagram. I mean, this guy defies gravity. It is breathtaking some of the things he can do. Really sense that Bartlett's looking for a shot right now. This match Better. very much like the dual meets. Each scored an escape Better. and it went 1 1 to the sudden victory. No stalling calls so far in this match. And even though we got a 1 1 score, Better. I really don't think anybody is. I just think these two guys are so difficult to score on. It's going to take some time. Go, guys, offense. Midway through this third period. Final 60 of regulation. For a split second there, Mendez had Bartlett back on his heels. Leg straight. Russell out of it. But these guys do such a great job of recovering. Russell out of it, offense. Operating from space now. Footwork and fakes. Fake there from Mendez. Shot here from Bartlett. Oh, ankle. Hit the hole for Mendez. Yep, he's got that ankle tied up here. Can't get the cradle now. He's switch off to a double here. Great job by Bartlett putting his shoelaces flat and squaring the hips up. Incredible wrestling from both guys. Now a wizard there attempt there by Bartlett. Fingers got Down to 15 seconds. Foot sweep attempt. And, oh, and, and he scores the takedown. Just kept wrestling through the positions. Yep. From one to the next to the next. Jesse Mendez in the final 10 seconds. Small we'll start, guys. Here we go. Leading it four to one. Set. Incredible sequence. One, two, three. To the ankle, and it's all but over with there. What an impressive takedown. And Jesse Mendez from Ohio State defeats Bo Bartlett. He has the Nittany line. Yeah, both these guys, you could just give them the nickname Gunslingers.
Uh, because they both, if they feel it, they're going to launch you. Austin Gomez winning that Big Ten title a couple of years ago for Wisconsin, then went to the national tournament in Detroit, finished fourth on the podium as an All-American, of course began at Iowa State, then went to Wisconsin, now here in Ann Arbor, seventh year out of Carroll Stream, Illinois. Glenbard North won three state titles at Illinois. Already a half minute into the match here, three decent attempts here by both guys. Gomez digging that underhook as he drops down to his knees. They clex the, the, the far ankle right there. It's wonderful work right there. Gets elbow deep around. It's got the outside palm down. All right, we'll see how he tries to finish this. He comes back down and tries to crumb across. Goes with the leg and the trip there. And great defense so far here by Lovett. The sweep doesn't work for Gomez. Rich Lovett is so tough to score on. Wow. Gets out of that one and keeps it 0-0. That was reminiscent of the Bo Bartlett match he had a couple of years ago from the standpoint of how did he get out of that? There's no question about it. He controlled that wrist, and I, really the surprise there was Gomez let go of the position because I think he was getting the worst of it. Yeah, he, that Gomez had that position. He's yeah. usually very good at that, and so Ridge coming out of that really was impressive. Yeah, it, you know, these big matches like this, if you just stay tough and just stay patient, you know, sometimes you just, you wear the other guy out here a little bit on may, maybe what his effort is, but expect Gomez to come back and fire at that thing one more time. That was just too easy to get into. Scoreless, 120 remaining here in this first period. And such a big week and a half here for Austin Gomez. Gomez, Sweet another single. leg attack, switches off to a double, three, and this three. time he's going to finish and get the three. He does such a good job going in low, climbing up, getting over the hips. Great takedown by Gomez. Yep, he went back to it. Didn't use the underhook this time, but went right back to it. Got a little more confident in his finish. As you mentioned, Tim, came across and got to the double here, and when you get to the double, get the man off his feet. And, and as, to your point, right when you think that took a lot out of Gomez yeah. uh, in that first effort, he was back on it. Yeah, and I think, you know, with Gomez's experience here and knows that Love is going to want this underhook really bad. He's got the top of his head blocked, now comes back into that shot. Both these guys so good with the upper body. They love the underhooks, and now Love it with a trip. And he answers back with a takedown of his own inside of 25 seconds, and he's got his first lead of the match, 4-3. to three. And you knew the potential for a match like this was there with these two because they they both have the, uh, um, the, the skill set to send the other one. And it's a big situation here for Lovett to finish this period on top. He was able to ride Gomez for over a minute in that duel meet. A lot of action here in the first period. Yeah, let's take a look at Gomez's first shot. He gets that underhook, switches off, right? Drives back through, finishes below the, the, the knee here. And Ridge love it, really digging that underhook there and jacking up the underhook on the right side, looking for the trip on the left side here. Just pretty much bull rushed him in that situation. But the key thing you mentioned, Shane, was the, the ride out that at the end, that's the difference in the match. Well, right here, there's a strategy there. It looked really early like Gomez wasn't one didn't want to have anything to do with Matt wrestling. Different for Ridge when he took him down. I think he was going to be dedicated to the top. But right here, Gomez says, hey, go, get up. We're not, we're going to go on our feet. He gives him that escape point. So love it now five unanswered, leading the Wolverine five to three. Well, Austin Gomez, a very confident young man. He knows that, you know, hey, I can go ahead. I'm good on my feet. I'm going to go get one, that one extra, maybe two extra takedowns to make the difference, and I might be able to take you to your back. So That's his, a really good point. I his mean, confidence level is supreme. He says, even if it goes doesn't go my way, I have the kind of offense that can make it up if I get, get behind. And he is behind right now. Ridge Lovett from Post Falls, Idaho, four-time Idaho State champion. Of course, a national finalist in 2022. Fell to Yanni Diakamahalas of Cornell. Love it, a three-time national qualifier. You know, even if Gomez were to get a takedown here, I you know, expect a you know, quick escape type situation. He's going to try to do this all on the, the, you know, I don't expect him to take the down position when it's his uh, turn to go down. He will go neutral, try to win this thing on his feet. Ridge Lovett's only loss was to Kyle Parco of Arizona State in the final dual meets on Nebraska's schedule. 
He's been spectacular all season long. Coming off a redshirt season, put on some strength. It's passed off season. All these little tougher little situations where you have to kind of reach and get a little bit better corner. You know, Lovett knows that strategy as well, so he just seconds, knows he has to go ahead and, and, and play, you know, good defense, good position, not fall for any misdirection. Mark Manning and Brian Snyder in the corner for Ridge Lovett's final 10 seconds. Short time. Austin Gomez wrestling for a Big Ten Three title about special, a week ago. Made an Olympic team for Mexico. Defeated Nick Lee, former Penn State Nittany Lion, to qualify the weight class. And he is a 2024 Olympian. Here Austin we go. Gomez, here we go, guys. Inside trip here Who's for Who's going to win Lovett. this? All right. Nothing, 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 and I think Gomez. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing. I, they're still wow. in the circle. They're still in the circle. The ball. Ball. No yes. points. points. You can feel everybody in this oh. Xfinity Center take a deep breath we in anticipation ours. of that action. <laughs> Here's Sean Bormet, head coach at Michigan. This one has lived up to the hype. Both these guys, I get home the, run hitters. I get the feeling we're going to see that type of action in the center of the mat next time. Reminds me of Alex Marinelli and Vincenzo Joseph. Those two guys would go in those upper body positions. And Chenzo Joseph with about anybody. <laughs> warning run, warning run. Warning on Lovett right there. Of course, two point lead. Gomez really digging that underhook hard, right? We saw before we tried to go misdirection here to the right leg, the leg that, that, that uh, Lovett's keeping back right there. You know, he works better from, you know, a little bit free. I think Lovett wants to go ahead and tie him up. This collar tie and underhook situation is a good move here for Lovett with his rear end of the line. Shot there by Gomez. Down to 50 seconds. Gomez scored the first takedown. Counterattack here from Lovett, but right into those hips of Gomez. Yeah, Lovett's right where he wants to be on the edge. He's wrestling hard, but he's not giving any position, and he knows he's got that edge of the mat here to work with. Circles back inside, now just a half a minute remaining. Yeah. Gomez trails it by two, riding time and on factor. Yeah, another stall warning, and that's a point. So it's a one point yeah. match, but we're down to 20 seconds. Look for Austin Gomez to bull rush him here. Gets to a leg. Switches he's off to a double leg. Gomez driving Nothing. through. You know, he's got to be Nothing. careful here not to go off the mat here with that. And knowing that, Lovett was able to go in and square his hips up again to his shin wizard. Now he steps up. Final seconds. And Rich Lovett wow. is going to hang on for the 5-4 decision. He's a Big Ten champion at 149 pounds. Fun match to watch. For the nation's premier wrestling conference, we'll head to Kansas City. 157 pounds, the 2023 Big Ten Freshman of the Year, the reigning Big Ten champion here at 157, Levi Haynes, ranked number one in the country, and Will Lewan for Michigan. Fifty-seven pounds, Levi Haynes over Jared Franick. He shut out the Hawkeye five nothing. Will Lewan over Brayton Lee four to one, and Will Lewan wrestling in his second Big Ten championship match. Lewan was here back in 2022 when he fell to Ryan Deacon of Northwestern and Penn State's your 2024 Big Ten tournament champions, the eighth. In program go, history, all of those under head coach Kale Sanderson. Levi Haynes, national finalist a year ago in Tulsa. And Jim, Levi Haynes has found another gear in the last several the weeks. Hands, yeah, I'll tell you what, with, you know, it started, we saw a great example of that, that Iowa-Penn State meet here where 
you know, this weight class is so tough. I've said this before here. A lot of guys like to get ear to ear, collar to collar. It really makes it tough to be able to go ahead and free up and get your offense. The only guy I know in this weight class that never gets his head tied up is Levi Haynes. Great footwork. And I got to say this, though, that, you know, one guy that you can count on in March is Will Luan, all right? All he does is win. Yeah. Two-time All-American, native to the finals there. So this is territory he's been in before. You know, and we know that's not going to be a high-paced match, but he's just a difficult guy to score on, and when he wants to score, he can. Yeah, and I'm sure that the coaches would like him to have a higher rate of attack, but not now. Not in his, yeah. you know, sixth year where he's at, two-time All-American. You've got a path to victory. You know it. These two met in a duel last year. It was 3-1 Haynes and Sudden Victory in the duel meet this year. 2-1 Haynes over Lewan. Yeah, Haynes got a uh, 20 se uh, with 20 seconds here, left, go. got a stall We're call against Llewellyn, 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 and uh, won it there. But one thing you said, you know, he's found another gear, Haynes. Well, he went through adversity in January. And what I was impressed with, you know, we talk about you got to go full seven minutes. You sometimes have to go 13 minutes. He went 12.59 to the second tiebreaker with a reversal against Soldate. That was a from crazy Michigan match. State to win 7-6. You got to be able to go sometimes 13 minutes. One of the crazier matches this season with Levi Haynes and Chase Seldante of Michigan State. Haynes 17 0 from Arantsville, Pennsylvania, Biglerville High School. Three time Keep finalist, playing, one time on, champ. Russell. Will Luan, of course, Chicago, Illinois, wrestled at Montini Catholic. Five time Fargo All American, 2017 Cadet World Champion, Will Luan. So he's got. Some big time skills. No score, 50 seconds here in the first. And Will Luan's hit some big moves here to get to this uh, the finals. That, you know, the takedown he had last night in the semifinals in overtime. Fingers, and then, guys. you know, the big uh, headlock situation he's in where he got a fall. You, you, that's not you fall, should, Luan. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It's not on the even. I don't think it's even on the bingo card, right? <laughs> he pinned the number two seed, Michael Blockus of Minnesota, in the quarterfinals. And 4-1 in sudden victory over Brayton Lee. Here he is in the final, short time inside of 20 seconds. Yeah, you know, most people, you know, most of the time, Levi Haynes gets to that shot right there that you just saw, right? Good reactions by Juan. Heavy on the collar tie. And this is a good period. Scoreless in for three minutes. Okay, Red. Michigan, Comes up Red. Choice. And Will Luan bottom. will go on bottom. Luan was eighth at the national tournament last March, was fifth in 2022 in Detroit, four-time national qualifier. He's been extremely durable Cover. in that Cliff Keen, Mason Blue, Michigan singlet. Nice job of coming in, into a sit-out position there. You know, this is where it's been a, a separator right there. But, you know, Luan, once again, gets out in less than 10 seconds. You know, we saw him in a huge uh, match earlier this year against Frannick where he, get, you know, Frannick got out in four seconds. Luan gets out in two. And Haynes is as good a, uh, on top as there, there yes, is out there. Is. That's great work from Will Luan to get that escape in less than 10 seconds. And he puts a tally on the scoreboard. Let's see if Haynes can get to his bread and butter right there. Likes to get that shot with the left leg of Luan. Seen him go to it a couple times. You know, a lot of times guys in the, you know, if you don't can't get to your shot, hand, you go guys, to your second, it. you know, page in the playbook there. What's the other shot on the other side of the body here? Just to get the guy moving a little bit, maybe what even fake it. You see where Haynes has done that, and that's given him the stall warning on Luan. Levi Haynes defeating Peyton Robb in the Big Ten final last March in Ann Arbor. Then he fell to Austin O'Connor of North Carolina in the national final. We're going to see Austin in the corner probably when uh, Edmund Ruth comes up at Illinois. Austin back home in Illinois as an assistant coach for Mike Poeta uh, for the Illini. O'Connor winning two national Watch titles. Fingers, guys. And the North Carolina singlet. 40 seconds in a 1 0 match. They're in this final at 157. Look at the footwork here by Levi Haynes. Down blocking, but also just feet move perfectly. Not too far back, just ready to reattack. He's got the, the control tie right there. Comes both hands on top of the collar. Right there, 
To the middle, guys, to the middle. Short time here in the second period. Haynes looking to join his teammate, Brayden Davis, who captured the title at 125 earlier today. Single leg, but time will run Thanks. out. We go into the third. Penn State, your choice. Bottom. Haynes, a guy that doesn't have much problem getting out from underneath either. We have one warning, you got warning, okay? Pete Mankiewicz, head official with Angel Rivera, the second official here in this final at 157. Luan covers. Haynes quickly to his feet. And Luan will cut him. We're 1-1, familiar territory. Yeah, and I'm looking at body language, and um, Haynes, he's, he's moving good there. And I think that what he is doing, hitting on the head and the attacks, is wearing Luan out. Yeah, inside collar tie on the left hand side, but also a, a, a huge tug on the on the tricep right there, right, right there, right there, that position there. Now the one gets Luan. to a lot, do a shot, but right here, good base defense. See how the hips are sliding down lower. Now you get the belly over the top of the of the head right there. Keep working. So important here to get back to a neutral position where now you can be offensive here. Some guys just don't have that down where they just don't slide all the way back. And that's what you have to do in championship matches. Never give the guy, the guy's here for a reason. He can finish those shots. Center, guys, center, center. Will Lewan has been hit with stalling once. The next one will be a point, and that's how he lost in the dual meet this season by a 2-1 score. Inside of a minute. You see Haynes there, he's moving forward. If you're Lawad, you gotta take some territory back and circle back center. Shot That's by the green, Wolverine. Green. Uh, and stall. there's a stall wow. call. Believe they hit Haynes they on hit that Haynes stall on call. That. Now they each have one. I and thought Lawad got Let's saved go. by the shot. Lawad goes for a throw on the edge. Well, you could get focused on that, but you know what? I don't. That didn't hurt anybody. No. It certainly didn't hurt, you know, Really, if you're if you're in Haynes' situation, you want the referee calling those stall warnings. Yeah, it won't yeah. take a little bit less next time good to get yours. Half a minute, guys, here in regulation. 1-1 one, one with Haynes and Lawan. And Haynes looking for a second Big Ten title. Shots countered by Haynes, front headlock position. Wait for him to go ahead, misdirect, try to get to that back hamstring right there, get to the ankle. Less than 10 seconds, you won't see much of a, a call there, but center, guys. the visual. Haynes will end this match, no, and he nearly nothing. scored the winning Let's takedown. Go. Time. <laughs> They're showing oh Bore Metz. In the corner, you have Kevin Jackson and Josh Trump. And that's just what he feels like. He's behind <laughs> bars right now. <laughs> so here we go, sudden victory. Nice high crotch, basically switches off to a double. He'll scoop the leg up here. Doesn't even have to do that. He collects the points. 11 seconds in the Senate victory. Levi Haynes, now a two-time Big Ten champion. That was just cumulative pressure, guys. Cumulative forward pressure. Paid off in overtime, and big smile from Levi Haynes again. the head to Kansas City. It is the match we've all been waiting for. Dean Hamity and Mitchell Messenbrink. These two guys are point scoring machines. Hamity 26 and 1. Messenbrink 21 and 0. Here we go at 165. At 165 These two guys have been on a collision course. Hamity with a first period fall in the semifinals. Messenbrink puts up 23 points on the board over All-American Michael Caliendo. Bonus points machines.
Hamity, 26 wins, 23 bonus points. Messenbrink, 21 wins, 16 bonus points. The scoreboards take a deep breath, guys, and here we go. Yeah, and already 10 seconds in, Messenbrink has taken his first shot. And Hamity was able to go ahead and stuff him a little bit. You know, Hamity provides a, a problem here for Messenbrink from the standpoint of, okay, you attack him below the uh, knee, that'd be okay, but you know what? He's does a great job. If he gets out of position, Messenbrink here, he can get back to a neutral position. The referee, Angel Rivera, helps him out there with a quick stalemate. But, uh, you know, you'd say Matt wrestling, maybe get a, an edge here, of course, here to uh, Hamity in the top position. He pins a lot of guys, has a lot of cradles. You see that great range he has on his body. He looks more like an 80. If you put a little bit of uh, you know clothes on him, he looked like an 84-pounder. Hamity, the reigning Big Ten champion, the two-time All-American, and look at that three. slickness from One. Dean Hamity. That's just the reach. You know, it, it, it's, that's hard to replicate. Both of these guys have a problem and that they don't have really anybody that you know has that length, you know, that to, to work One, with neutral. here for Messenbrink, you know, because Hamity's long, and I don't think anybody in the Wisconsin wrestling room puts up Mitchell Messenbrink's pace. Well, I'll tell you, I've not ever seen Hamity get tired. And so, and Hammity came on the scene two years ago as a freshman, and it's reminiscent, I mean, because uh, Messenbrink has shown up big time this year in his freshman campaign, but you're right, Jim. I mean, that pace, I think, by both of them have been um, off the no charts. No control, gentlemen, no yeah. control. See Messenbrink there cut the corner, uh, trying to get the cut, corner cut here. A lot of guys lose this position to Hammity because they allow the left shoulder to get you know, outside of the knee. Right now, you can see Messenbrink really driving that shoulder underneath the kneecap, and once again, we have another stalemate call. Quick stalemate. Messenbrink from Heartland, Wisconsin, three-time state champion. Hamity, a three-time Illinois state champion from Joliet, Illinois, Joliet Catholic Academy. Couldn't get a four-state title as COVID wow. canceled the tournaments. Just, sorry, Shane, I just saw that. Center, range of center, that shot. Center. He just seemed like he was so far away, but able to go ahead with his long reach, get to it. And now Messenbrink looking no for his control. first takedown. No Great control, defense gentlemen. there from no Hamity control. with the whizzer. Yeah. Really working that hard here. The elevating at the same time, he's hitting that whizzer with that left arm, hipping into the man. Now Messenbrink doing a good job here. Notice how he switched off from on the back and went around the uh, leg. Switches off to a double leg, head to the outside. That was all set up here by his ability to basically go around the leg. And now Hamity has an ankle lock right there. And this is where a guy like him with his range is able to go ahead and get a cradle locked up. But now stepping over a wizard, going the other direction with a misdirection, head up by Messenbrink. Hamity collects the points again. Inside of 15 seconds, the second takedown for Dean Hamity, and the Badger leads it 6-1. to one. What a scramble and score for Hamity. So impressive all the way from that first post ankle pick, which I hadn't seen much uh, from choice, uh, Hamity man. this year. And then, he again, your point, Jim. What do you want, my man? Yeah, Tim, look want? at the, the, the sequence here where he's able to grab the far ankle, and I think that's a size and range that you can't really duplicate again. And so far, Hamity's been up to the pace. Hold, and Messenbrick hasn't Check met somebody like Hamity yet this year. I mean, there's not often that Hamity's been in on the shots that he has and not gotten them. Sinks in a claw ride off the whistle, does Hamity. Thigh pry as well, sneaks in a leg. And Messenbrick will get the escape. It's a four-point match. Long way to go in this final here at 165, two of the best in the country. Four versus five go. nationally. Go. Center. And I don't think that Hamity can be the, I love what he's doing right there, drifting right. You know, it's getting pushed to the edge right there, but he's, he's drifting right. And we've seen here before, he can't stand in front of uh, uh, Messerbrink like this because you're always going to have him up on your legs. But now the feet are out wide. The laces are, Three, he grabs that far down. ankle again and scores again. So beautiful defense. And now it's into his down one. body of water here, so to speak, with that cross-face cradle. Hamity's been able to score off of Messenbrink's attacks. Yes. And, and he starts out, like I said, with his own offense, so he has uh, really executed offensively, proactively, and with his defense being a great offense. And now he's going to take riding time over a minute. Burke, Burke, Burke. And it's really tough to get the pace of the match where you want it when you are all tied up with your wrist. 
And that's why I was a little surprised that Hamity kind of let him go pretty easily, went for kind of a, a splatal attempt right there from the top position. This is much more traditional claw ride. Let's see if the freshman can get out. Hamity, the Midlands champion, didn't give up a single point at the Midlands. He was the Dan Gable outstanding wrestler as Messenbrink skips away. Nine to three, riding time during a minute right and there, a half gentlemen. for Hamity. And look at the breathing with Messenbrink. I'm not sure he's been here. This is deep waters for Messenbrink as far as uh, his conditioning right here because uh, he was winded at the end of the first period. Hamity with three takedowns. Yeah, immediately cutting the corner there is Hamity here. He gets that far ankle. This will be huge in the final seconds. Three, and he gets the score with one second. Just showed me a lot. Executing when he's tired. He's tired, but he executed so well there. Nice drop right there. He's cracking down right there. And, and Hamity was already reaching up over the top. And, you know, he kind of forewent his baseline defense first. And there you see his mom and dad, and John and Bernadette, Messenbrink. Hamity, quick escape, and he's right back in the legs. I don't think he's got the escape. No escape yet. You're right, Jim. Yeah. He was looking still for green. the reversal, still working Two. on it. And now he's got that reversal. Two more for the Badger. You know, and if I'm him, I, I just kind of stay in this top position, really knock him off of his base. We've seen where Messenbrink has had a hard time with that. Good action here by Messenbrink. He's got Hamity back on his hips here. And he One, goes neutral. for the escape. Hamity with the shot this time. Now it puts Messenbrink in a position where he can go ahead and double leg and shoot through. And that's going to be near fall points for Messenbrink. Woo! I believe that was the first opportunity in this match where Messenbrink has had an opportunity to counter Three. on Hamity. And oh, now man. working on top, trying to bring that riding time under a minute. Ten seconds away from doing that with a minute remaining in this third period. Messenbrink's got the lead, 13-11. Did this match turn on a dime? Looking back at his corner, he knows he wants to try to keep him down. Hamity really having a difficult time. That's a tough, tough thing gentlemen. when you have a long body like this. Sometimes you get out torque, so to speak. And he's got all his wind back right there. The momentum going Messenbrink's way. Really, really turning the corner. Now he's giving up that two-on-one ride there. Down to 25 seconds. Go ahead, Shane, give it. It's a coffee grinder for Mitchell Messenbrink as he slides in an arm. He's got Hamity flat. Some miss and brink magic in this third period. And you want to stay down, cover those hips, stay back behind the arms. Wow. This is the loudest this place has been all weekend. Mitchell Messenbrink rallies from behind, and he is your Big Ten champion. Talk about. Raising the roof. There is Edmund Ruth, and he will come to the wrestling and get his arm raised as the Big Ten champion. Last night in the semifinal with Shane Griffith and Patrick Kennedy of Iowa, we saw the Wolverine Griffith late in that match suffer an apparent injury. He hobbled off the mat. It didn't look good, and he is going to injury default in this 174 pound Big Ten final. Some good dance moves there from Easy Edmund Ruth. Yeah. That's a big, big moment for the program at Illinois. They have a Big Ten champion. Yeah, Mike Poeta, the, the head coach there, has to be really happy with the development of Edmund. And uh, Ed, his brother, has to be very proud. Ed Ruth, a four-time Big Ten champion, three-time national champion, but when he, it comes to dancing, I'm going to go with Edmund Ruth. He's got some moves. I tell you what, Smooth. he was determined to do some entertainment, whether it was on the mat here wrestling or dancing. So Edmund Ruth, the first Big Ten champion since Isaiah Martinez, who, of course, won four for the Fighting Illini. Big smile there from Edmund Ruth. Deserving champion here at 174.
20 and 1 for the Golden Gophers. And another finalist from Penn State. This is Nittany Lion at Bernie Truax. 14 and 3. The last Minnesota wrestler to win a Big Ten title at 184. Remember this guy? Kevin Steinhaus. Steinhaus, your Big Ten champion in 2012. And Isaiah Salazar looking to claim a title at 184. Stage is set for 184 pounds. Isaiah Salazar over the Wolverine. Jaden Bullock in the semifinal. Bernie Truax avenging an earlier season loss to Lenny Pinto, the two seed of Nebraska. Salazar 20 and 1 out of Greeley, Colorado. Four time state champion at Windsor High School. And Bernie Truax in his sixth year spent his first five at Cal Poly where he was a three-time All-American last year, most recently at 197, now back to 184. And these two meeting for the first time. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great style matchup here too, because Salazar, just a power guy, you're going to see you know, evidence of his grip strength and the things when he gets on the leg, he likes to pull it in. Truax is, is, is a guy that can go ahead and attack almost at ankle level from an angle almost at 90 degrees. He's just got to, it gets to the corner real quickly here, uses that reach and length to be able to attack a guy below the knee. He doesn't really stand out in front too much and he doesn't want to do that too much against Salazar because that power, you take that power into play when you do that. Salazar, a two-time national qualifier. He was fourth at the Big Tens last March and then went two and two at the national tournaments. Look at the difference between the, the wide stance here. These guys are, Truex really gets out wide. They're, you know, got what we saw before here, like with Hamity here, the range that he has is incredible. And you mentioned this earlier, Shane, isn't it funny that he started his college career 149 pounds? 149 pounds, <laughs> five years at Cal Poly, went 149 to 165, and then went 174, 184, 197, placed fourth at the national tournaments at those three upper weight classes, 74, 84, 97, and now comes to Penn State, he's at 184. I mean, this guy has had quite the journey. Halfway well, it, he's a team guy, I'm sure he was ready to go 84 and 97 wherever Aaron Brooks decided not to go, and so so he goes in, how impressive to have been exactly. at 197, to have been an All-American. But then you think about, hey, how much better has he gotten? He's gotten more offensive than ever this year. But when you think about the room, the Penn State room, you got Dake, you got Taylor, you got Starachi, you got Aaron Brooks in there, you're going to get better. <laughs> The guys you like, don't have to go far. You're going to get tougher, and I don't know whether it's it's not from getting takedowns on any of those guys. Well, that's a coach's dream when you can recruit a guy that, that's that small and has been able to go ahead and roll around and scramble with the lightweights like that and to be able to go ahead and now grow up it. and have the size to be able to take that to the, the upper weights. Bernie's from Oceanside, California, was at Rancho Buena Vista High School. We are scoreless, just over Action a half man. minute remaining in this 184 pound Big Ten final. Truax looking That's to join three of his Nittany Lion teammates as a Big Ten champ. Patrick McKee wrestled in a 125 pound final for Minnesota, lost to Braden Davis. Gophers with two in these Big Ten finals. You notice how Bernie wants to keep, uh, Truax from Penn State wants to keep forehead to forehead. He doesn't want to go any deeper than that, okay? He'll go ahead and duck a little legal. bit, drive wide stance, even with the underhook here. He tries to keep at bay here. He doesn't want to get ear to ear too much. He knows that this is not a power situation for him, and he's keeping his distance. And you mentioned how powerful, uh, you know, it, it, Minnesota wrestler is. I mean, Salazar is really powerful, but I see the, the length 
of, uh, of, of Truax there. Um, he, that he allows him. He's been up at 197, and he doesn't get overpowered. He doesn't get tied up and overpowered oh. because he uses that length so well. Well, so, when you, what's happening is, is that when, when somebody's going to come at Truax like that, that's where he kind of plays Matador and gets to the low you know, ankle shot here from the side. Truax to his feet, looking for a return, brings him okay, back down to the Truex. Resolite. Yep, nice head lever right there by Salazar. Here, see how he's got the wrist tied up right there, using the head as a fulcrum here. The wrist is a lever here. Don't make me jump across this table. I'm going to get you Tim's too, man. Right? I, I'm, I'm on my feet. Look. I mean, when you say that, you got to rub it and you just stare at me. I know what you're trying to do. And, and, and Shane, don't antagonize me. And, and Shane, don't, don't, don't stretch it because I'm with Jim on the head lever. Saying? So, I mean, there you go. Oh, I mean, it's a head lever, and he's using that well, though. Talking to former gopher. We were talking last night with, with uh, Mac Ryder. Fun to talk with him. And we were talking about some different positions, and that, of course, came up. Mac Ryder used to have some great battles in that gopher singlets. That's 60 the, seconds, second period. Nice escape there by Truax here as we get a little disjointed there. But, uh, you know, that's one of the fun things about this tournament is going out afterwards, being with fans, with some Ohio State fans, Minnesota fans, Indiana fans, you know, Rutgers parents and all that. It's been a lot of, a lot of uh, it's a, just a joyous weekend to be a part of. See the team scores, Actually, bottom right. And of course, a ton of Penn go. State fans here. 30 seconds, second period. Got to make the shout out to Luna Steakhouse. Hey, they took care of us a couple of nights ago. Jim talking about going out and meeting some wrestling fans. Yes. Here is Isaiah Salazar. This would be huge Broken with 15 control, seconds control. on a single leg. Yeah, let's but, but see how Truex has that wrist tied up there. He took the inside wrist. He's got that wrist tied up over the top. I'm gonna Don't let expect any scoring in this working. situation. Stays 1 0. Maryland's been a great host. Yes, really has bottom. enjoyed coming to this part of the country. And, you know, a lot of wrestling fans, as we'll see next match, you know, one of their own, really making a splash here with the Nittany Lions here. Opportunity to become a four time Big Ten champion. Salazar quick into his feet off the Not whistle and game. skips away for the escape for 1 1. Yeah, great food out here in Maryland, no doubt about it. Yeah, that was a highlight going out to uh, Sam and, and Max uh, uh, Lunas' uh, state, steakhouse. Uh, Sam Russell for Oklahoma State and Mac, of course, for Cameron Cornell. Cornell. Yeah, a finalist and uh, former number one seed in the NCAA. Always great to support the wrestlers. <laughs> Every yeah. bite of food that went in my mouth was maybe the Fantastic. best I've ever had. Yeah. It here. was sensational. Nice little shot there, a little swing single there, Truax. Penn State, it's eighth Big Ten championship under head coach Kale Sanderson. Ahead of Michigan, Nebraska, and Iowa, and Rutgers. What a performance. Fit place for the Scarlet Knights. Good activity. little scramble here with 60 to go in the third. Good activity by both guys. You can see that, that Salazar wants to drive right through you, and, and Truex wants to play, play a little Matador game right there and get to your low single. Under a minute, man. Let's go. Jaron Quincy, lead official in this final. Matt Zeitz, the outside official. Down to 40 seconds here in regulation. Riding time and on factor. Both guys with an early escape. Oh, that, that was fake right there. Now dive in there by Salazar. And Truax with that reach able to get to the ankle there. No now Look Salazar. The corner. Yeah, Salazar trying to dig Neutral. that shoulder underneath that kneecap right there. Now he's got his head underneath. There's a little bit safer position. Can he come up and try to continue to score? But you got to create a little hip separation right now. Got to get your hips moving, your ankles moving. No Sit danger. back over the top. Down no. to 10 seconds. No. Might get a neutral danger situation no here, perhaps, as Truex standing no. on his head. They scramble in the final seconds, wow. and we will go to sudden victory. That's the danger okay, about that situation. If it went about three, five seconds more, you probably had a neutral danger call. You, sometimes you just, it's better to punt. <laughs> no stalls, guys, no stalls. Let's work now. Two minutes set. Brandon Eggum and Trevor Brandvold in the corner for the Gopher Salazar. Shot there from Truax, straight on. Wrestle out of this. 
Right there, trying to dive through there at Truex. Oh boy, how did Salazar get out of that ankle Strength. Pick? Good answer. He is so strong. Guys work back up to their feet. 90 to go on sudden victory. I tell you what, both guys, wow. Third yeah, shot right, right there, but now right Salazar there, comes right back up and he's the one that does a fantastic job. Now he's coming back up. Look at the strength. He's Similar situation as to what we saw at the end of the third period. What a recovery. Yes, but this time a little bit better job of staying up on his hands. If he can come underneath that right arm of Truax, he's going to get it. He does. Going for the fall. He's going for the fall. Can he end it with the fall? Isaiah Salazar is going to be your Big Ten champion. What a wonderful job of staying high, keeping his head high, posting on his hand, and actually letting go of the leg and keeping himself in a better scramble situation. Gets the three takedown and four near fall. 8-1 final. And Minnesota, the Gophers, have themselves a Big Ten champion. Guys at 184, one of those guys, Ryder Rogowski, the pitting machine for Ohio State. 197 pounds, Aaron Brooks, the three-time national champion and three-time Big Ten champion, undefeated at 16-0. And what a season for Zach Glazier, the three seed from Iowa, 24-1. It's been a phenomenal season for the Hawkeye. Aaron Brooks from Hagerstown, Maryland. North Hagerstown High School, four-time Maryland State champion, right back in his home states, looking to make history in front of friends and family here inside the Xfinity Center. Seven pounds, Aaron Brooks has dominated his way. As he beat the reigning Big Ten champion at the weight class, Silas Allred, 14 to two. Zach Glazier, an impressive win against Jackson Smith, the two seed of Maryland. Aaron Brooks, 16 and 0, 15 bonus point victories. And for Zach Glazier, 24 and one, his only loss was in the dual meet to Aaron Brooks. And Glazer is the only guy this season that Brooks has failed the major. That was a 5-1 duel inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. And Glazer, you know, in that match, you know, the, the, the team was really on hard times there. For, you know, Penn State was dominating Iowa in that situation. But Glazer, a guy who hadn't really had much varsity experience at this point, wrestling behind Jacob Warner, actually went out there and I felt tried to win the match. And... Uh, Stayed equal on his feet for most of the match and then, you know, tried to go ahead and get a, a takedown. And not many people have really kind of gone out there with that thought process against Aaron Brooks this year. I think he just has the thought pro process that's correct that anything can happen and he's out there to win it. You, you know, you got to be in it to win it. Yeah, but I, th here's a different guy right now. He's laid his hands on you one time. The adjustments have been made. I love the way Aaron Brooks just puts himself in wrestling position and says, I'm going to figure it out. I, I, I know I'm better than anybody when it when we get into a wrestling position, and I'll just figure it out. He's just got, he's free, and uh, he's not defined by wrestling. It's just what he loves to do. Yeah, I see what he's doing this time. That, that you know, so much what we've seen here from Aaron Brooks this season is love to punch that left-handed underhook. But now he's going over to the right-hand side of the body here, looking for single legs here. There's the second beautiful finish right there. Six and to one, 90 seconds into this first period. What do we always say at the end of the year, Shane? Talent shows up. And he's got boatloads of it. U23 world champion, won a cadet world title, junior world silver medalist. 
Olympic hopeful Aaron Brooks, of course, standing his way as David the Powell best wrestler in the world, the magic man, David Taylor. But you really make a good uh, point there. Is this is a step to the NCAAs. The NCAAs isn't the destination. And that, that's a step that uh, he takes into the Olympic trials um, in the middle of April in um, at his home at Rice Jordan Center. And um, he's, uh, he's focusing on their, that. And he continues to focus on the target of what's next on the world stage. So step by step for Aaron Brooks. We've seen how slick he is on his feet, which he is, but he is just a beast in this top position. Well, he's everything he needs to be when he needs to be it. Great point, Jim. Well said. So true. I might okay. steal that from you, Jim. Yeah, I no, like I, that. I stole it from Dwayne Goldman <laughs> on the duel. He was referring to Dan Gable. Not that cross wrist tilt right there. You know, Glazier's got his knees out wide like that, trying to do Keep some working, hand gentlemen. fighting down there. It's just a really tough look there. You got your forehead on the mat and you're battling, you're doing everything you can to keep your hands free, successful at doing just that. But good close to the period here for Aaron Brooks, two takedowns and a mountain of riding time. 6-1 for Brooks, of course, back in his home Green state of Maryland, second. friends and family, good crowd. Going down, second period. Supporting Aaron Brooks as he's looking for his fourth Big Ten title. Big smile there from his dad, John, in the middle. Brooks starting second period on bottom. Glazier has made the most of his opportunities in his fifth year. He's from Elbert Lee, Minnesota. Won a couple of Minnesota state titles. He has been behind five-time All-American Jacob Warner. And here he is, 24 and one, wrestling for a Big Ten title. Talk about a guy that has just stuck to it, Zach Glazier. Certainly has, and he's had a good tournament there. He just lost an overtime match, I believe, in the semifinals. I don't, can't recall what the score was, but tight match. Excuse me. Didn't lose the match. He obviously is here, but, but you know he's, he's had some battles here. Like the overtime match was against Jackson Smith here, which was an overtime and, bout here. Yeah, well, in front of the home crowd. In front of the home crowd. A desire to be the uh, first finalist for Maryland. Big time overcomer. Yeah. Look at that underhook and finish from Brooks. Signature underhook from Brooks. So. Once again, choosing to kind of just stay on the top position, letting him know that uh, working, you know I'm, I'm here all day. I'll let you go when I want you to get out. He loves to work those wrists. Keep working, guys. Sticking a near side bar. He's so tough on top. We're looking at one of the best ever. Warning bottom man. Warning red. To become warning only red. The third Mitney line to win four Big Ten conference titles. There's only been 17 in the hundred plus year history of the conference. Riding time over two minutes. Has that inside wrist. Digging those shoot One. tops into the Resolites. Uh, he's really crunching them down here, that the pressure and the weight. Aaron Brooks will finish the period on top. 10-1 lead to the third, looking to join a couple of all-time greats at Penn State. Ed Ruth, the four-time Big Ten champion, and the four-mentioned Magic Man, David Taylor, a four-time Big Ten champion. Those two combining for five national titles, Ruth and Taylor. Taylor have to share the Magic uh, name with uh, Messenbrink now, huh? I mean, there's a little bit more magic, magic in State College, I would say that. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful counter there by I got, I got. Brooks. Three. Nice little forward trip with the pinch. You mentioned those two guys, Taylor and Ruth. One, you know, could you find two better guys to help you turn around a program? Yeah, that's who uh, Taylor Sanderson fingers, had to do it a dozen go, years fingers. ago. Let him go. Penn State, as I Stop, mentioned, they have won 10 of the last guy. 12 so, NCAA championships. Big Ten will look to make it 17 straights 
in Kansas City. Wow. Oh, oh, great oh. angle pick from Aaron <laughs> Brooks. He oozes and outs this crowd. I felt like my ankle got pitched right there. He oozes and outs this booth. Just really. You know, I tried to move my left foot back there and it got stuck. <laughs> He's thinking tech fall all the way with 55 seconds. Oh. Goes back to the yeah. other hook and a trip. Three more. And Aaron Brooks, four time Big Ten champion. State Farm's state of success. The 18th four from the Big Ten. The big guys, heavyweight final here in the Big Ten. Number one ranked in the country in the top seed. Undefeated Greg Kirkley of Penn State. And Nick Feldman, the redshirt freshman for the Buckeyes. Greg Kirkley from Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. Four-time state champion from Simile. And he is sent to tow the Resolites. Fitting that Greg Kirkfleet and Nick Feldman step onto the mat to some Enter Sandman by Metallica. Their path to this heavyweight final. Kirkfleet over Yaroslav Slavikovsky of Rutgers. A shutout 9 0. And Nick Feldman for the second time this season defeats All American Lucas Davison 8 6. Kirkfleet and Feldman here for the heavyweight title of the Big Ten. I guess, Shane, if there's anyone that can take Fan Man from Mariano Rivera, I'll give it to, uh, <laughs> uh, to Kirk Fleet. <laughs> Guys, I was impressed with Nick Feldman in that semifinal match here. Luke Stavison, you know, you know, was that big, huge emotional win, you know, as, as a freshman uh, going against him. At, at, and now you've got a takedown there for Kirk against Kirk Lee. Might that be the first of the year? I believe it is the first time. But this guy, you know, Kirkley's got to go ahead and answer and wrestle now. This is not going to be a coronation. But his the work he did in the semifinals there to back up a win against an All-American like Davison, you know, the duel meets one thing in the Cavelli Center, but this was another effort here in the Big Ten semis. These two Mets in the duel meet this season, early February, was 12-0 Kirkley's, the major decision. Kerfleet 14 and 0, 11 bonus point victories. Feldman, this guy can score. 24 victories, 12 tech falls at heavyweight for this young Buckeye. And I've talked about it before, but just the fact that he's on the mat, he can, he's coming back from a, a major neck injury, a major surgery, had him off the mat for you know over a year and didn't get to develop his true freshman year at Ohio State because of that. And the fact that he is here is a testament to his not only work ethic, but uh, just, you know, the doctors and everybody that did such a great job. Right there, little waving single leg attempt here. Got to try to cover the fingers here and get out. He makes the turn. Kirkley dives back in on a double leg. Drives right through. That was powerful. That play shook the Xfinity Center. Kirkley, four unanswered. He's got his first lead, four to three. And this is where... He is almost impossible to escape from. He is a mountain on top. Well, you know, you got to respect the freshman going out there and hitting his, you know, hit the little swing single there, it's trying to go ahead and add to his lead. Yeah. This is just not the same level. Wrestling a big dude like this. And, you know, at 12-0, a previous match, that tells you that there was a ton here. of riding time and tilts. So... Greg Kirkfleet, three-time All-American. He was seventh in 2021. Then he was fourth the following year. And then last year, Big Ten runner-up to Mason Paris. Work, work. 
fell to that Wolverine in the national final Red, as well. Warned, Kirkland at the Big Tens has gone fourth, third, and second. Can he make that final step this afternoon here in College Park and get that Big Ten title? He's in good shape with riding time over minutes, leading four to three short time, 26 in the first. Feldman head down. Tough place to be for Ohio State's Nick Feldman. Now just a red, green. Stall call on Kirkleet. Both kind of guys got to work there a for little bit, but I, Both oh, guys wow. I mean, Feldman's just not going to get many feels like Glenn this in set. high school. <laughs> you know? Put four guys on you. Yeah, That's the right. feel. Yeah, in, in ten sacks of sand. Kirkfleet finishes the period on top. Right. Both guys with a takedown in the opening frame. Well, let's look at the first one. That was a really impressive little effort right there. Just sprawling, Red. getting to a corner here, dropping Green back below down. the knees there, collects the points there. I like to call that calf roping there. And here's Four the effort here. We thought Bottom that, set, that Feldman was all the way out here and then that drive in. There's Greg Kirkfleet. Father of the Nittany Lion heavyweight, who quickly escape. escapes in the second period and adds to his lead five to three. Kirkley wrestled for Minnesota All-American Will Short at Simley High School. Feldman from Quarryville, Pennsylvania. Melbourne Prep is where he wrestled. Prep national champ. Quick little elbow pass right there. It, trying to get the far leg. Kirkley. Good reactions by both guys. These are quick wrestlers here. Straight on shot right there. Notice how he's jumping to the hamstring right there. Does a great job of covering. And you know, when you're in that situation, you want to try to run him down and put more pressure on his hips. And it, he, you can run faster behind him than he can going forward here with that much weight on it. Great execution from Greg Kerfleets. Sixty second second period. And this is what's going to be so tough for everybody in the national tournament is when he decides to put it on top you right there. It and in wrestling, weight is is really misleading, okay? They, they are all everybody's at the gentlemen. same weight class, points, particularly the heavyweight, points, and they get guys. a little bit, you know, okay, we know that he's close to 250, 58 pounds, whatever. Stay whatever away. that number Restart. is, 248. Come but on, guys. Kirk Leak knows how to make himself heavier. Go ahead, Red, get set. With the techniques he's using and the long arms right, he right. has, uh, yeah. it's uh, and the laces up, the, you know, the shoe laces up here. We points, can really drive on you. So much in, in the top position is moving your feet. He's in his fifth year. He does have another year available if he so chooses. Yeah. I'd love yep. to see him back for another year. Yeah, that uh, 21 and 22 were his two freshman years. The COVID uh, wrestler, and um, you're right, back in a. Nittany Lion singlet next year. Feldman down on his belly. See that pressure from Kirk Fleets? We're good, we're good. So strong and powerful. Has that wrist. Riding time approaching three minutes as the second period Red. comes to a close. Red, your choice. I talk about being able to do a look at this action right here. Feldman comes right. out. Neutral. Watch Kirk feet, leave his feet, right? His feet are off. Very little weight on his knees. All the weight is on top of him, and Dad likes that. Starting neutral to begin this third period. No surprise, Feldman. He's not going underneath Kirk Fleet again. Not by choice, anyways. See the team scores. Ohio State has taken over fifth place. Break that grip. Riding time locked up for Kirkley. He's in bonus points territory. Yeah, he's doing a good job of reading Feldman. He knows that he's got to come on offense right now. He's ready to react to that. Circles back in. Now the, the young buck here. You just got to just you got to you got to go right. You just. What's that old line? If you're any kind of man and the guy's standing up and giving you his leg, you gotta shoot. 
<laughs> and you said, yeah. And you are full of them tonight, Chuck. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm full of it. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you mentioned Young like Buck. It. It's, it's uh, appropriate because we saw Jesse Mendez earlier win, and of course, Feldman, number one, number two. Uh, ranked wrestlers in, in the two, 2022 uh, number one recruiting class for Tom Ryan. Five, six of those seven uh, that came out, the big seven, were in the lineup this year. One, Mendez being a sophomore, the others all redshirt freshmen. Youngest team in the Big Ten, Ohio State Buckeyes. They are the young bucks. A lot of young talents in Columbus. As I mentioned, Kirkfleet's been fourth, third, and second. And he will make that final step to the top of the podium. 9-3. Greg Kirkland remains undefeated. And he's got himself a Big Ten crown. See the emotion from his dad. As I said, nobody does it alone. Friends, family, coaches, training partners. It takes an army. He's overcome a lot from that uh, first season that he had.